Okay, now we turn on the power of the microbeast. You will see the microbeast calibrating its sensors. During this phase, you must not move the helicopter. Or if you are on a windy day, uh, a good thing might be to lay it on the side to avoid the uh, wind catching the blades. Okay, now it is ready, but we are not ready for flight because we need first to program all steps. To go in the setup menu, you have to push this button as long as you need to get to a steady light, like this. And now you are in the different menu points. You can go from one menu point to the next just by pushing the button. If you don't move anything else, you don't change the programming. <clears throat> For each of the points, you have in the instruction manual a page explaining what you have to set up and uh, the LED here shows with, with, with its color what is the current setting. So let's go in point A. Point A, the, menu, the instruction manual tells you that you can set it up as a flyballess gyro or a regular gyro. For a flyballess gyro you need to have the blue light and for a regular gyro you need to have the red light. To switch from one to the other you just need to give some tail impulses like this. You move the tail stick like this and you change color. Red, blue, red, blue. It is not very easy to see on the video because uh, it is saturating but here we are in blue, here we are in red. So what we want to have is a flyballess helicopter so we go to blue and we push the button to validate. Next point is the orientation of the microbeast. So it can be installed flat like this or vertically on, a, on the frame. Um, most of helicopters have them flat so the default setting is blue. You, we can just go to the next point which is point C. Point C corresponding to the frequency of the cyclic servos. There are four choices, 50, 65, 120 and 200 Hz. Uh, the highest is the best, but your servo needs to accept this high frequency. Uh, there at the end of the instruction manual, there's a list of all major servos where you can check the speed you want. Uh, but if you are not sure, it is a good thing to start low and increasing flight after flight until you see if your servos are still cold. If they are getting warm, you, are, you have a too high frequency. In my case, I use a BLS 980 from MKS, which are perfectly at 200 Hz, so I can go directly to the blue setting like this and validate. <clears throat> On point D, we are adjusting the impulse length of the tail servo here. In this case, you have 1520 microseconds for all regular servos or 760 microseconds for specific tail servos. I am using an MKS BLS 980, which is a specific tail servo, so I need to adjust uh, 760 microseconds, which is red. So I give a stick input like this. The LED is turning red, and my servo, now you can hear the servo working. I validate with the button and go to point E, which is the frequency of the tail servo. Again here, you have to choose the highest possible frequency that is compatible with your servo. In my case, 333 Hz is OK, and I can keep the default blue value and go to the next point. Now we arrived at point F, where we can adjust the tail rotor servo. For that we will use the center position without touching to the stick to find the best fit for the servo horn to be perpendicular to the linkage. Sometimes it's a good idea to turn it by 180 degrees and take the other arm because they are not symmetric and you might find a better fit. Once you are about a perpendicular, you need to adjust the length of the linkage to have a slight compensation angle for hovering.
Once this is done, you will use the tail stick to find the limits. So you can easily move left and right. So you just go to the limit you want. You don't move the and the micro beast will learn this limit. You go to the other side. You avoid any binding and you don't move and the micro beast will learn this other limit indicating with purple that it has learned both sides red and blue. We go to the next point which is point G where we can adjust the compensation direction of the cell of the gyro. Here we need to move the tail and watch the trailing edge go in the direction you are moving to compensate the movement. The trailing edge is going in the direction of movement which is the right compensation. Just for example I will choose the other direction and now we see that the trailing edge is behind the movement and will not compensate anything. So this is not good. I need to give another stick impulse and verify that the trailing edge is going against the movement which is what we want and I validate by pushing the button. Okay on point H now we can adjust the zero position of the cyclic servos. As you know you are not allowed to do any sub trims in the transmitter so the microbeast is providing a way to adjust your zeros for each servo individually. You select the servo by as usual by using the rudder stick and you can see the color switching from the rudder stick and each color is corresponding to one servo. So let's start with the blue color which is one of the roll servo and here now using the elevator stick you can adjust your servo up and down and you just need to adjust it perfectly perpendicular to your linkage. Once you're okay, you move to the next servo, which is the red one and the other one servo. And here we can see that it is too high, so I have to go lower and adjust the 90 degrees exactly. Go to the next servo, which is the elevator servo, unfortunately you can not see it here, so I have to do it by eye from the inside, like this. Once you are ready with this, you need now to adjust your linkage, so that all the linkage are at the right length to have a perfectly horizontal swash plate. So you need to adjust the three linkage. Usually they are of the same length, but uh, if your servo are not mounted exactly in the rubbers or something like this, you might uh, end up with some slightly different uh, length. But the most important is that you have a 90 degree here, and then you adjust the distance here to have a perfectly horizontal swash plate. Once you have done this, you need to adjust the zero pitch. So for that, you need to adjust the length of this linkage, to get a zero degree pitch on both blades. Most easy and most accurate to measure this is just to fold your blades to the back. So I fold both blades to the back and you can see that they are exactly at the same level and if they are parallel to the tail boom then you are sure that you have zero degree here. So this is for me the most accurate way to guarantee the zero degree. So once you are happy with this, you can validate the button to go to the next step. Now we are at point I, which might be one of the most tricky ones. It is the point where you can uh, choose the right CCPM mixing you need. So in the documentation you can see that depending on the color you can use 90 degree, 120 degree or 140 degree. So you, um, in my case it is 120 degrees so I have to choose a red color which is the default color you can see here and now it is blinking once 
once per cycle or if I change it two times per cycle, three times per cycle or four times per cycle. You need now to find which one gives you the right pitch direction. So you move some pitch on your and you see in this case, oops, the pitch is not a, a, a right pitch. So I change to another position which is not the right pitch too. So I change again using the rudder stick to another thing and I, actually I try all four until I find the one where the pitch is going up and down horizontally. It might not go in the right direction meaning that when you give some positive pitch you have some negative pitch but uh, this is just a matter of changing the reverse of your pitch servo in the transmitter. Now you check on the elevator if it's going in the right di direction it is and you check on the ailerons it is doing the right movement too again if the direction is not the right one you need to change the reverse in your transmitter. So basically you have to try all four combinations until you find the correct function on if each stick and the correct direction will be uh, just adjusted using the reverse of your transmitter. And you validate when you're happy.